night may be long and the dark may be deep, but the answers are there to be found. Whether it's the normal, the abnormal, or the paranormal, you're in the right place. Let's go Beyond Reality. Good evening, good morning, and welcome. It's Beyond Reality. Who, uh, who was the last one to send me the package of those candied orange slices? Because I... Um, I've resisted them this long, and I couldn't resist them anymore. And I just had a couple, and they were really, really good, and they make me want more. Um, but I also have, like, uh, you know, candy. I need, I need water. I need some water or something. Anyway, welcome to the program. Not that you needed to know that. But welcome to the program. It's great to have everybody here. Uh, we've got a great week lined up for you, and it starts with a great program tonight. Um, I'm not sure if we had a chance to announce that we were going to have Joshua Warren on the program tonight. Last week, so I'm not sure if it was scheduled that way. I don't remember. I know it was kind of last minute. Uh, Joshua is a, a great friend of the show. He's been on a couple of times already. Um, he is a well-known paranormal researcher, investigator. He has done work in almost every particular discipline uh, that falls under paranormal studies, including ghosts, including uh, cryptids, including Bermuda Triangle. He's got several uh, trails that he's blazing himself, and we're going to talk about those tonight. And one of the things we're going to do, if, if you actually listen to this show for uh, years now, you're probably aware that uh, the first time we had Joshua on the show, we were talking about uh, the wishing machine that he is um, involved with. And he ended up sending Jason and I um, wishing machines, and we haven't used them yet. By the way, Jason's off tonight, but we haven't used the wish, wishing machines yet. So I decided that tonight, since uh, Joshua is going to be on the show, we're going to use my wishing machine. We're going to do that at the end of the program. So I don't know how to work it. Um, Joshua is going to walk me through this, and we're going to see how this wishing machine works, and then we'll have an opportunity to judge whether it did what it supposed to do which is grant my wish we'll see how that works out um but that's all part of tonight's show we're going to talk about uh, parasymatics with joshua that's something he's been working on um also cre- uh, audio files or, or or sounds that are created by sigils or by uh designs um there's a whole science here developing and joshua's going to going to be able to explain it far better than i can so we will wait to do that when he gets on the show um Tomorrow night's show, John Hogue, who uh, was with us the night that the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris burned. Now, John is a Nostradamus expert and a prophet of, of his own right. And um, there was uh, an article that had been released right after that Notre Dame fire that uh, Nostradamus had predicted that fire in one of his um, prophecies. And uh, some people believe that to be true. Others say it's a misinterpretation. John Hogue came on that night and said he thought it was a misinterpretation. Uh, But we wanted him to come back because we've never had a thorough discussion on this show about Nostradamus, his predictions, the quantrains, uh, his prophecies. Some people say that if you if you keep things ambiguous enough, you can slide them into any time frame and say, see, it's coming true. Other people say, no, it's all in the interpretation. And John is going to walk us through all of that in tomorrow night's program. Then Wednesday night, G.L. Davis, who's an author and a paranormal investigator, will be here. He'll talk about true accounts of a couple torn apart by a paranormal entity. It inspired a novel he wrote called A Most Haunted House, House and uh, Haunted House of Haverford West. Uh, Both of those books are based on this particular story. So uh, GL will be on with us Wednesday night. And then Thursday night, we've got a couple of guests for you. In the first hour, returning guest Robbie Thomas will be here. He is a psychic criminal profiler, and he'll talk about his new book called Murder, Missing Persons Cases. And then in the second hour, Lee Roberts will join us. He's a U.K. ghost hunter. Uh, He will be talking about famous... Uh, England or UK hauntings that he has investigated throughout uh, England. So that'll be an interesting discussion as well. As you can see, we've got a lot of things coming up. There was one thing I wanted to mention, though. Um, you know, we many of us have these devices in our homes that uh, activate when you say a word. Amazon has one. Um, you know, the Alexa. There's there's also Siri, which is on iPhones and other um, Apple products. And there's been suspicion and actual actual confirmation over time that these devices are listening to you all the time. Well, it is confirmed. Um, you know, people have been looking into this quite a bit, and it, 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 there's no there's no more mystery about this. 
The question is, would you let a stranger eavesdrop on what you're doing in your house all of the time? Well, you probably wouldn't do that, but that's essentially what's going on with the Alexa device. The microphone in the uh, Alexa device is constantly listening and not just listening, but recording what you're talking about. It uses that information, according to Amazon, to help uh, better train and better design its artificial intelligence. However, we also know that employees at Amazon listen to these things as part of uh, their effort to increase the um, efficiency and accurate accuracy of these AI devices. Uh, but the other thing is that they, they're, they're there, they're recorded, and um, they're there for basically ever. So there's only one way to defeat them. You can, you can mute the microphone in the device, which basically renders the device useless. You can also unplug it. That also renders the device useless. So you're going to have to decide whether your privacy is worth it. There is a way you can actually go to Amazon and find your specific recordings and actually delete them manually. That's something you can do as well. Um, you might want to look into that. I do not have one of those devices because of that exact reason. I don't like the idea of something listening to me all the time. I mean, you have to listen a couple hours a night. We well, don't have to. I appreciate the fact that you do. Uh, but I don't want a device listening to me and then deciding when I log on to Facebook or whatever it happens to be that everything I had talked about in the last 24 hours starts showing up in ads. I, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm okay. I don't need that. Um, that's a little intrusive to me. So I don't have one of those devices, despite the fact that uh, it's kind of cool. I mean, they're fun, you know. Uh, Alexa, play, you know, whatever, and in, in a sudden the music starts. It's great, but um, I'm not going to accept. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to take that uh, along with some eavesdropping. I'm just not. I'm not okay with that. So be careful if you've got one of those devices. Be very, very careful. You know, this is a. It's a. It's a very um, evolving gray area in which some people have, uh, you know, have reported that some of these recordings have been used in murder trials and things. So I'm not sure how all this shakes out, but uh, just be aware of what you're doing and uh, be very, very cautious uh, because you just, you know, you know, somebody listening to you all the time, recording your conversations, perfect strangers, and then playing them back and using them for whatever reasons they want to use them for. I not okay with me. Um, Stop by Scaricon.com. Scaricon's coming up in just a few weeks now. It's a great uh, convention of fans of horror entertainment, paranormal entertainment, whether it's TV or movies. Uh, there's celebrities, there's parties, there's really unique vendors. It's in Framingham, Massachusetts, June 7th through the 9th. Go to Scaricon.com and you will find all the information you need. There's some really cool stuff coming up at Scaricon. Also, swing by YouTube and go to JV Johnson. Give that uh, YouTube channel a subscribe. There's a lot of great stuff there, including archived uh, programs from Beyond Reality Radio and some other stuff. We put other stuff there as well. So it's worth the trip. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the little bell icon so that you get notifications when we go live or upload new videos. All right, I'm going to take a break. When I come back, I will bring our guest for the evening in, Joshua P. Warren, paranormal investigator and researcher. That's all ahead right here on Beyond Reality Radio. Scaricon New England, the fan convention for all things pop culture, horror, and paranormal is almost here. June 7th through the 9th at the Sheridan Hotel and Conference Center, Framingham, Massachusetts. Scaricon brings an amazing group of celebrities, including Cassandra Peterson. You know her as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Elvira. Heather Langenkamp, Amanda Wiss, and Lisa Wilcox from the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Plus, a 40th anniversary cast reunion and screening of the cult classic Phantasm. Phantasm. And many more. Scaricon also features panel discussions film screenings, great vendors, and parties. It's a weekend of fun from start to finish. For more information, visit Scaricon.com or check us out on Facebook. Use the promo code BRR at checkout to save 25% on your admission. That's Scaricon.com. Scaricon.com. Scaricon New England is being held June 7th through the 9th in Framingham, Massachusetts. Visit the website today. Use promo code BRR with your ticket purchase to save 25% on admission. Again, thanks for being with me. Jason has a night off. We'll take your phone calls later in the show at 844-687-7669 is the number to call. Uh, again, I'll open up the lines in the second hour. Our guest tonight, Joshua P. Warren. His website is his name, joshuapwarren.com. He's the author of about 20 books, including How to Hunt Ghosts and Use the Force, A Jedi's Guide to the Law of Attraction, 
Um, and he's written many others. And, of course, you can see all those books if you go to the website. Uh, but it's always a pleasure to have Joshua on the program. He's been here a few times, and I'm very, very pleased to have him back. Joshua, welcome back to Beyond Reality Radio. Well, thank you, JV. You know, I love this show. I'm a big fan, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you because our discussions can go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly can. And in speaking of anywhere, um, I don't know if you heard the opening segment, but I was reading a story uh, that's been circulating about these devices that are starting to occupy many homes, like the uh, uh, Amazon Alexa and Echo, and uh, Google has one, Apple's got one, and they all are listening to us all the time. And not only are they listening to us but they're recording us what do you think about these devices that uh, are fun to have but man the idea of something monitoring every word i say not so sure i'm okay with that no i think it's creepy i don't like it at all and uh in fact you know it's funny because uh some people have this attitude that well if you have nothing to hide then you should just share everything on your mind with the whole wide world but mm. i i think that that's not you know really what the concept of privacy is about um sometimes you know in your home uh you have things that you want to to talk about or or address that are not meant for the whole world to hear and uh, i think it's it's uh, one of those slippery slopes to have something sitting there monitoring everything that you say all the time so i don't care for it and uh, maybe i'm just too old fashioned but i don't think i'll ever uh, agree to having such a thing in my home well i don't think it's any mystery uh, most of us have seen the phenomena if we have a smartphone that you know we're g- walking through our daily lives there that we then we log on to facebook and something we've been talking about a half hour ago starts showing up in ads in facebook or yeah. whatever social media platform you jump on or just google or whatever it happens to be. So you know darn well, they're not just listening, they're not just recording, but they're using the information for something. Yeah, in fact, sometimes I feel a little you know naive to, to sit here and say, well, I wouldn't have that here. But on the other hand, I've gotten to the point now where if I look up a restaurant or you know some place that I want to go to, you know, I'm in Las Vegas right now, so there's a lot to see and do. I can't remember all the places that I've been to. I go to Google and say, where have I been before? You know, And it tells me if I've been to this place or not. So, yeah, whether we agree to it, the monitoring is happening already. And so uh, I guess it's just one of those things that we have to face as reality. Wow, yeah. It's, it's a bit of a scary, uh, and as you said, slippery slope. Uh, we've got to be really careful and not surrender our privacy and our freedom so quickly. But having said all that, what have you been up to since you were on the program last? Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's been a really busy past year, and, and that's one of the reasons I'm here in Las Vegas. Uh, you know, I'm close to Los Angeles, and I've been doing a lot of TV work, and I'm developing a lot of new projects. As a matter of fact, I uh, created a show here in Las Vegas. I'm an official Vegas showman now. It's called the Creepy Vegas Ghost and UFO Show, 60 Paranormal Minutes in a Bar, and what I love is being able to not only go on programs like Beyond Reality and tell people amazing things, but show them the proof, show them the evidence. And so people come here from all over the world, so we're now showing them some of the best footage. We're letting them touch haunted objects. I mean, I've been, that, that's been an interesting thing to get involved with. But uh, other than that... Um, and, and by the way, I'm going to be at the Creepy Vegas show, show this uh, Saturday. If anybody's going to be in, in town, you can learn about that through my website. But I have been developing what I call Parasymatics 2.0. Now, I believe in one of our past conversations, I talked to you about Parasymatics in general, right? Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. The last time we were together, we were talking about that. So the thing about parasymatics, just to you know, capture this as quickly as possible for people who, who don't know what we're, we're, we're discussing here, I became inspired by looking at certain haunted objects like Robert the Haunted Doll, for example, and realizing that under UV light, this doll had this weird little symbol on his sleeve that looked kind of like a distorted snowflake. And I wondered if that was put there ritualistically, because that's always been the rumor. And it turns out that this symbol looks a lot like one of these things called a magical sigil that you can find in books that go back at least to the Middle Ages. And the more I studied these weird symbols and sigils, the more I realized that sometimes they reminded me of the patterns that you could create in water, 
when you play certain tones and sounds in water, and that is what we call cymatics. It's the study of seeing how that matter shapes to vibration. So, for example, there was a, a, a German scientist named Ernst Schladny who would take these little thin sheets of, of, of metal and he would put salt and sand on them and right. just run a, run a violin bow down the side and you'd see it snap into all these patterns. So I, I started taking sounds and tones and turning them into images in water and then turning those into sigils, which I put them freely on my website. People had all these amazing results. Every day I get stories. But then I said, what if I could reverse this? And instead of getting a picture from a sound, what if I could get a sound from a picture? What would a crop circle sound like? What would Stonehenge sound like? What would the Egyptian Book of the Dead sound like? Uh, what you know, and and what what does a hundred dollar bill sound like? I mean, not everything has to be spooky, and so I, I worked out this method. I, I and I'm sure we're probably coming up on a break here soon, but I worked out this method so that I can take an image of anything, even somewhere that I'll never go. Like I can take a picture of Mars. I don't have any plans to ever go to Mars in my life, but I can take a picture of Mars, and I can extract a tone from that. And not only is it interesting to listen to the tone, but also you can turn around and create a sigil from that tone when you've retrieved it. Now, I don't know if I am a madman or if I am looking into decoding images in reality, but that's been a big part of what I've been working on for for months now. And we're going to talk a lot more about that. And by the way, I would not put you, you being on Mars past you. I think that's probably something that's very likely in down the road. As uh, as we get closer, you're going to be one of the first. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we've got a lot more to talk about with our guest tonight, Joshua P. Warren, paranormal investigator and researcher. Visit his website, Joshua P. Warren, no period after the P, joshuapwarren.com. Uh, check out his books and all of his other work there. We're going to be continuing this discussion. We're going to open up the phone line in the second hour of the show at 844-687-7669. It's Beyond Reality Radio. I'm J.V. Johnson. Did you know that online retailers like Amazon have constant deals that can save you money on the things you buy every day? It's no joke. Save 40%, 50%, even 80% on great products, and all you have to do is know about them. Noodle Shark is the way to be alerted when something good is coming your way. Noodle Shark is the social media page that lists great deals that not only save you money, but give you the deals before anyone else has them. All you have to do is find Noodle Shark on Facebook. Search it as The Noodle Shark. That's The Noodle Shark, because you deserve to save too. Become a Shark and save. Uh, Josh, before we get back into talking about the parasymatics, I want to bring up the wishing machine just for a second because we talked about this earlier. And um, the the wishing machines that you had sent, Jason and I, we haven't tried them yet. We've kind of been waiting for the right opportunity to do it. And I think tonight is the right opportunity for you to guide me through trying mine. Well, you know what? I admire you for actually doing this live on the air because you're you know what i've been talking about this for years and you're the first person who has ever said let's educate everybody at once on on this because i know at first the wishing machine sounds like it's it's just a ridiculous thing it sounds like a scam and i, I bought my first wishing machine uh gosh probably about 20 maybe even more than that years ago and the reason i bought it is because I love to just experiment with anything that has knobs and dials and switches. You know, I'm a geek. I have a museum. I have a laboratory. I just, you know, I say, what's what's the, the, the harm in trying something out? If I get it and, it and it doesn't work, well, then it's a novelty, and I can put it on the shelf and say, look, this is a thing, you know, a part of quackery, the history of quackery right here, right? So I bought my first wishing machine for $300 from a man in California. At that time, I was at my home in North Carolina, and as soon as I got it, I wished for my $300 back. I thought I was being nice and clever. And the funny thing is, within just a couple of days, I got a a call and an email from a big resort in the area, and they said, we have a group of dentists that have a a conference here, and they want somebody who can talk for maybe an hour and tell some you know local stories and history, and they're willing to pay $300. And I thought, <laughs> well, isn't that interesting? 
that you know that it, it's not like a leprechaun came and delivered three hundred dollars, but it was it was so synchronistic that that was the exact amount that I sure. wished for. So I, I started taking it seriously, and I started using this thing. And now I could sit here for two hours and tell you incredible story after incredible story. But there's no substitute for your own personal experience. Before we get into how you use this thing, I want to explain something sort of fundamental. People think of me, as they should, as a guy who's going out and investigating spooky things, ghosts, UFOs, the Brown Mountain Lights. But I've always been interested in the practical end. In other words, I'm not just trying to be the life of the party around the campfire. I'm trying to figure out where does the power come from for these things. You see a ghost, people talk about it being some luminous, dynamic thing. Well, where does that power come from? Where, what, what power is the Brown Mountain Lights? What power is a flying saucer? You know, there's a practical end to this. And so I've always been interested in that relationship between matter and energy. And you could apply that to consciousness as well, right? You know, like, where does our consciousness come from? So understanding something like the wishing machine, as exotic and weird as it is, may be a, a, a component to understanding the relationship that we have with other dimensions. And we just got a picture last month of a black hole. Now, what was that? That was a tunnel to another reality that we got a picture of. We don't know what is on the other end of that black hole. But I believe that we're sort of overlaid with a power supply, and your consciousness can direct that and tap into it, and that's what we're doing here. So before we continue, um, this is difficult to talk about because it's hard to wrap your mind around, but, you know, does that kind of make sense, the way I've explained why I'm, I'm even into this? Yeah, it certainly does, yeah. And, and, and I guess what I need to know, just so we can prepare here, is what am I going to need to to do this later? So Because we're going to do this in the last segment of our conversation together. What am I going to need to prepare? Anything? Well, what are you going to wish for? Well, I was I was trying to, uh, to come up with something that uh, would benefit all of us, and I think I mean I could say world peace or something, but I'm actually going to go with I want the Beyond Reality Radio affiliate list of radio stations to top 100 radio stations. Okay, is and that a reasonable good, wish? Now, now that now it is a reasonable wish, and now that you've said that, now we're committed to it, right? Yeah, you, you know, who knows how many people just heard you say that? That's right. So, so before we do this, I, you, you have to really think about that end result for a second. Now, how are you going to know that this happened? Like, in what way will this come to you? Would you read it in a magazine? Or, like, how would you get the information, wow, my wish came true? Well, in that particular case, our syndicator, Westwood One Radio Networks, would tell me. Okay. So you'd get a phone call then, right? A phone call or an email. Or maybe an yeah. email. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we want to think about. We want to think about that end result. We want to think about that phone call or that email because the process from getting you from here to there is not important. Uh, we, you know, the universe is so uh, complex, you can't even imagine the ways that things can manifest for you. Just think about that end result. So the next thing you have to do is think about how do I make this end result happen for me in a way that feels emotionally good because you know it's it's, it's it's sort of an oversimplification people talk about how you know the right side of the brain is creative and the left side is more critical thinking um i don't know if you can really slice the brain in half black and white like that but what i can tell you is that the critical part of your thinking is what holds you back in in life because you're always saying ah, this can't happen that can't happen you know this doesn't make sense this is not supposed to but the the creative part of your brain where you have your imagination that is where you actually can you know sort of like get the energy behind m manifesting things and so we want to do whatever we can to tap into the emotional aspect of this. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Now, okay. before I continue, is all this making sense so far? I yeah. mean, I, again, I want to be clear to everybody who's listening. Yeah, absolutely. 
So I did a wishing machine workshop. If, if you go to my website, joshuapwarren.com, you will find a link to the wishing machine and all kinds of free educational content where I'm trying to explain how to properly use this. One of the things I talk about in a workshop that I filmed was this lady who stood up, and she said, I want to be happy. I have never been happy in my entire life. So what do I do? Do I just write down the word happy and put it on the input plate before I tune this machine? And we'll get into the tuning here in a minute. She said, I, what do I do? Because that's kind of an abstract concept. Sure. So I said to her, well, okay, we have to take this abstract concept and we have to turn it into something that stimulates feeling in you. So you just told me that you've never been happy in your, in your life, but... I know that somewhere in your brain, you have a moment that is one of your happiest moments. So that could be something simple, watching a sunset, eating an ice cream cone, uh, touching a puppy, you know, kissing or hugging your loved one. Like what? There has to be something that we use as an emotional reference point that will give energy to this. So figure out what that is and use that as your model to to, to connect you and that creative part of your brain with the input that we're going to give to this machine because it's like a computer. And they say garbage in, garbage out. So the, this, this thing is only going to give you what you put into it. So this lady got it. Like you could see the light bulb went off in her head. And so we have to think about what you want in two ways. Number one, you have to write it down, and you've done that already, right, JV? You've written something yeah, on a piece of paper. I have, yeah. And what does that piece of paper say? It says, uh, exceed 100 Beyond Reality Radio affiliates. Good, good. So that's that's a very nice, defined, succinct sentence. You know, that's great. You, gotta, you really want to narrow it down to one sentence. So now we have to think about the feeling that that would give you if that happened to you. So... What, at this point in your life, from what you have experienced, makes you feel closest to the feeling that you're going to get when you achieve that goal? Well, I would view, view it as a very, um, I'd, I'd be very proud of, of the professional success that that, that uh, would indicate. And I would say probably um, the closest thing I've already experienced in life to that is uh, either when this program started, with its syndication, mm -hmm. or when I sold my first uh, radio company um, a few years back. So one of those two would be the same kind of uh, feeling of professional success that reaching 100 affiliates would feel like. All right. So that, that's perfect. Okay. So now take one of those two, and when you just told me those things, which one conjured up an image in your mind first, uh, like a, a picture on your computer, uh, you're shaking somebody's hand or you're looking at the website, like which one of those created the strongest image for you? I'd have to say that the uh, bringing this radio program to syndication in the very beginning uh, created the strongest image for me. Okay, take that image, and if you can, print it out. If you can't, draw it or have an artist do it for you. Okay. I, I like to hire artists. You know, you can go to websites like Fiverr, and you can hire some right. amazing artists to produce incredible stuff for you. I'm lucky because I know a lot of very talented people, and, you know, I can draw a little myself. You have to have an image. Now, I know there are people out there who, that, you know, their minds work a little differently, and so I'm not saying this works for everybody, but this is your best thing. Have an image that represents that emotion that you just described. Okay. Overlay that with the the actual intention. So now we have a representation of both sides of your brain. We have the logical side, uh, which is the, you know, more analytical side, and we have the more creative side. And when you get those, you put them onto the input plate. And once you do that, now you have to go to the next stage, which is tuning the machine. Now, um, I'll, I'll take you through that process of tuning the machine, but I want to point out right off the bat here 
that the wishing machine is used for specific goals and specific projects, just like the one that you've stated here. There is another psionic device, which has a very sensational name. It's called the Miraculous Prayer Board, which works a little differently because it's used for daily maintenance. And we can talk about that at some point in the show as well. But for now, um, w- before I continue, because you know me, I can go on for an hour <laughs> about this. Uh, h- how is this sounding to you at this point? It's all making perfect sense to me, yeah. Okay. So do you want me to tell you about tuning the machine if you want to do a wishing machine uh, project? Well, let me ask you this. Okay, you've told me what we require. The thing I don't have is that that uh, representation, the the printed or drawn representation of of what I consider to be the same level of success. Uh, I don't have that. Is that something that I should sketch during a break, and then we can we can take this to the next step in the last segment of our discussion together, or do you think this is something we need to do down the road? I think you should, right now, let's do it. You know, we have the whole listenership with us, which is great, right. uh, and everybody's going to want to see how this turns out. I mean, this is a real time experiment we're doing. All right, here. then what we're going to do? So, then what we're going to do then is I'm going to have my producer um, actually sketch out what I have said I need as a representation here. When I, when we have that during the last segment of the show, which will be after 1:30 a.m. Eastern. Um, we will we will tune the machine in. We'll put these things on the input plate, and we'll you know f- take this from A to Z and 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 go through the process and and make it happen. That sounds good. Yeah, right. yeah that's a, that's a good way to uh, keep everybody in suspense a little bit here <laughs> until the end of the show. <laughs> that's right. So what we'll do in the meantime here? Uh, uh, it, it, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you know, see, that's one of the great things. Uh, like right now, here you are. You're talking to all these people around the country, if if not, you know, multiple countries. It seems like magic. If you had explained this to somebody a hundred, two hundred years ago, they would have said you were insane. Like you can get on this thing and speak, and millions of people can hear you. It sounds ridiculous. When it comes to the wishing machine, you've got to open your mind. I mean, you know, when when Thomas Edison invented the phonograph, people did not believe that that could exist because they said a sound is an intangible thing, and there is no way to record a sound. It it, it sounds like the dumbest thing ever that you can. How can you record a sound? It's like people used to say rocks can't fall out of the sky. I mean, come on. You look up in the air, there are no rocks up there. And of course, then we learned about meteorites. Right. So this is one of those things where like, we, we need everybody to sort of understand that this may sound ridiculous, but if you have the experience, then the experience will show you the truth. And so, you know, when Thomas Edison would demonstrate the phonograph, people thought that he had a ventriloquist or he had some kind of hose connected to, uh, you know, he, he, was a, he was a con man or whatever, you know, and he was faking it. What we're talking about is taking something that seems intangible, like your thoughts, your consciousness, and transducing them into something that changes physical reality. And I have a theory on how the wishing machine works. Nobody knows for sure, but I do have a theory if you want to get into that as well. Our guest tonight, Joshua P. Warren, we've been uh, spending the last uh, few minutes anyway talking about the wishing machine, which we're going to actually perform a, what do you call it? Uh, 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 It wouldn't be a ritual. What's it called uh, when you use the wishing wishing machine, Joshua? I call it an experiment. You know, I mean, like, that's what this whole thing is, because... um, when you're dealing with new and exotic technology and you're trying to figure out you know, what, how, how this may or may not work and what's going on, it's always an experiment. And this is a very complex one because we are talking about that relationship between the mind, the body, and the environment, which is the most complicated subject known to humans. Um, so yeah, you know, you're doing a, a great experiment here, uh, and all the listeners get to see for themselves how, how all this works. And we'll do that in the last segment of the program. So a little, uh, about 45 minutes from now. So we have about <laughs> just a minute and a half here, a uh, quick segment, cause we went long in the last segment. Um, I want you to take just a moment and uh, tell the folks uh, the, the variety and the range of of the works you've done, your books that are on the website. Uh, I know you've you've covered so many different topics and so many different disciplines. Uh, just give folks a taste of what's there. 
Well, thank you for, for asking me to do that. I'm sort of living proof of what I'm telling you about, you know, manifestation. Uh, yeah, I've, I've published over 20 books, including books with big big publishers like Simon & Schuster. You know, I've been on the History Channel, Travel Channel, Discovery Channel, Nat Geo. I mean, I've produced TV series. I've been cast on TV series. I've traveled the world. I mean, I you know, I have a, I have a wonderful life. And I was just talking to my wife, Lauren, the other day about the fact that if anybody doubts that the stuff that I am, am doing works, I don't know what to tell you other than just, you know, look at, look at my life, not to mention the fact that I get emails every single day. I got, I, a guy just emailed me, and I, I know we were, we're about to run out of time, but a guy emailed me. He said, I took the money sigil from your website, joshuapwarren.com. He says, I went to a casino. I hit three jackpots back-to-back. The last one was $10,000. He sent me a picture of his machine. And so uh, another guy emailed me. He said, I've been in debt for years, and I used a wishing machine. And uh, I, I, all I wanted to do was ask to get out of debt. And he said, I hit the lotto. Look, I'm not suggesting that gambling is the best way to use these machines. Right. But... I'm just telling you, these are the emails that come in, and if you doubt that I'm telling you the truth, I'll forward them to you. Uh, We've got a great show underway here. We're talking with Joshua P. Warren. He is, of course, a well-known paranormal researcher and investigator. His website is his name, joshuapwarren.com. He's got many books to his credit, about 20, in fact, including How to Hunt Ghosts and Use the Force, A Jedi's Guide to the Law of Attraction. Joshua, that's a pretty appropriate title, given the fact that we just passed May the 4th. Isn't that, I'm not a big Star Wars guy, but isn't that like a Star Wars holiday, May the 4th? Yeah, it, it sure is, and and it, what's so funny is because I am a, obviously a big Star Wars fan, and I actually started writing that book before I even knew that they were going to produce the movie called The Force Awakens that was kind of the new reboot of that whole thing. So talk about perfect timing. I mean, <laughs> it, it just it worked out beautifully, and so I get uh, emails from people all the time who say, I'm I'm not a Star Wars fan, but you don't have to be a Star Wars fan to enjoy the way I've presented things using Star Wars in some cases as a reference to sort of help you visualize things. Uh, We've got a lot of topics to cover before we get to the final segment of our discussion tonight where we actually uh, do an experiment with the wishing machine. Uh, So let's start. I want to find out, um, when we had you on the program last, you had discovered a bit of an anomaly in time near Las Vegas, a time slip, if you will. You were measuring, measuring time with a very, very sensitive instrument. Have you done any more work on that since we talked? Yes, I have been taking measurements all around Nevada and California and um, Arizona, and I, I have not measured another anomaly. I did find out, however, that during the time period when I was doing that work, nearby, uh, the military was testing some new nuclear bombs. And not that they were active, but I don't know what they're up to. You know, Area 51 is just right up the road. So it's possible that what I captured was the result of some military experimentation. But I found it intriguing that I, you know, started telling everybody, like, look, I've been using this thing for a long time under various circumstances. It's always been stable. It's always been reliable. This one time I get this anomaly, next thing you know, I'm watching the History Channel, and there is this program on that is hosted by uh, David Politis, and he went to Mesa Verde in Colorado, where people have been sort of just vanishing inexplicably, and he brought in his own scientists. These these are guys who have many more credentials than I have, you know, actual rocket scientists. They came in with lasers and measured everything, and they also said they found a time anomaly there. So I think it's just a matter of of time. I keep keep using that word before we we sort of appreciate and recognize that there are actually these subtle time anomalies strewn all around the planet. When you measured that 
uh, time anomaly the first time when we were talking about it. Um, you you were measuring it in I think like microseconds or something. I'm not even sure what the measurement was. But the truth here is that any anomaly in time starts to uh, actually I would say create more questions than it does provide answers. Would you agree with that? Oh well, sure. You know because. It- with, with the, the the meter I'm using is called the differential time rate meter or the DT meter. It was invented by Ronald Heath, who is a Silicon Valley uh, engineer. And basically, when you use the DT meter, what you're doing is you are uncoiling a 100-foot cable. And it reproduces sort of the effect that you would get if you had two stopwatches that were perfectly synchronized, they're supposed to stay in perfect sync. And if they get out of sync, well, then something weird has happened. And uh, so what I found was that, yes, in, in between Las Vegas and Area 51 in June, I think it was June 8th of last year, um, we, we, we captured this, I, I think it was uh, 25 microseconds per second anomaly that occurred within a span of 100 feet. That's not supposed to happen within 100 feet. Now, if you talk to some NASA scientist, he'll tell you that, yes, as we, as we fly up and we get away from Earth, you're going to find all kinds of deviations in the space-time environment because you're getting away from the core of the Earth, which has a lot of density and creates a high gravitational field. But over a span of 100 feet, you're not supposed to get a time anomaly. Right. And that's exactly what we got. Right. All right. So I want to, I want to uh, revisit this, the discussion about parasymatics because you began our discussion tonight with this because it is something that you're working very, very hard on currently. And you, you use the phrase parasymatics 2.0, kind of the new and improved, right? So When we first talked about this, you were explaining that you could take images of anything and you could turn those images into sound. And the sound, um, we were discussing that it has meaning. We were discussing that it may be a language unto itself. For those who aren't familiar with what we're talking about, because they didn't hear us talk about it the first time we did months ago, explain this again to us. All right, well, let's say that uh, an alien uh, visited Earth for the first time and found some sheet music that was written by Beethoven. So at first glance, this just looks like, you know, a piece of white paper with a bunch of black lines and black dots on it. And if you don't know how to translate that, then uh, you're sure not going to get, you know, the ode to joy out of it. Right. So this alien has got to figure out how to take this and decode it somehow and see if there is, you know, if this is a representation of another vibration. And if the alien is successful, and that's going to be a long process, I I imagine, then all of a sudden the alien's sitting there listening to, you know, to joy. So what I wondered is, is it possible that every image that you see of everything, a crop circle, Stonehenge, the Great Pyramids at Giza, uh, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, even the pattern on a $100 bill, you know, whatever. Is it possible that every picture, every image that you see is actually encoded with some information? And that information can be translated into sound, just like sheet music. And if it is, what does it sound like? And then once you get that sound, what do you do with it? And I developed this system. I didn't do it alone. I this was, you know, my idea, but I, I worked with a number of engineers, including my colleague Mobius in Asheville, North Carolina, and we created this system which we call Parasymatics 2.0. The original Parasymatics was how do we take a tone and turn it into an image, which could be something like a magical sigil like you find on haunted and cursed objects. 2.0 is the opposite. How do we take an image and turn it into a tone, i.e. a sound? So you might ask yourself, well, what exactly is the point of this? Well, for example, I have a friend who is a ghost researcher, and he said, I have a picture of a ghost. That is a, it's a full-bodied apparition. He said, I took this picture myself. It's the real deal. 
He said, I want to see what this sounds like, what tone it makes when I put it into your system. Get that tone and then play that tone when I go to a haunted house to see if playing that tone somehow stimulates more ghostly phenomena. Now, that's an experiment in progress. On the other hand, if you take the sigil of a $100 bill, uh, which is you know produced by Parasymatics 2.0, you can listen to that, you can meditate on it, you can put that in your pocket, and you'll see probably something amazing happened. For example, if, if you go to my, my website, joshuapwarren.com, I have a section called the Curiosity Shop. And obviously, that shop is where I put certain you know, interesting items because I want to drive people there. So I put the sigil to the $100 bill at the Curiosity Shop. And I said, go to the Curiosity Shop, use the $100 bill, let me know what happens you know, as a, as a sigil. Since then... I have gotten a lot of reports, and this is free, by the way. This doesn't cost you a penny. I've gotten so many reports from people who have had success. I myself took that sigil as soon as I'd gotten it from that tone that comes from a $100 bill. I went to the airport here, McCarran Airport here in Las Vegas. And, of course, in Vegas there are gambling machines everywhere. And so you've got slot machines at the gate while you're waiting for your plane. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So I sat, I, yeah, I sat down. I put a $20 bill in a slot machine. I bet $1. By my third spin, I won, I think it was a little bit over $1,600. Oh, wow. The lady there said, I have, she says, I've been working here for two years. I've never seen anybody bet a dollar and win that much money. That was the first time that I used it. And again, I I, I swear, JV, I hate to reduce things down to gambling, but it's kind of an interesting laboratory, you know, when you're in Las Vegas. Well, I mean, it's a a great way to measure uh, the influence on chance. I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about. Yeah, especially because you know how regulated it is. Exactly. I mean, you know, you know how things are supposed to work in this town. Like, you know, you've got all these commissioners and all these gaming people who come in, and they, they, they put a level on the table at the roulette wheel and make sure it's a hundred percent level. And you know, they, 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 they have to stand up to these stringent standards. So, I view this as a pretty cool laboratory. So, anyway, uh, the the point I guess altogether is. Maybe, maybe, all things around us, all images that you're exposed to, have some kind of information encoded in them, just like sheet music does. Does it matter? And I'm trying to figure out how to play that. Yeah, Joshua, does it matter if it's a digital image versus, and when I say digital, I mean a printed uh, uh, image from a digital file versus a film image? Does does, does any image of the of the same uh, object object or item make Come uh, make the same um, sound. I mean, how does that work? Well, it, it doesn't seem to matter because here's what I do: I take an image. So let's say I have a picture of, uh, oh, we'll say the, we'll say Stonehenge. Now, the first thing I have to do is figure out what point of view do I want to use. So right off the bat, this is more of an art than a science because I'm starting with my subjective opinion. Do I want to look at it overhead? Or do I want to see it from the left or the right or, you know, the inside or outside? I mean, so I, right off the bat, I wouldn't call this a science. But on the other hand, everything in, in, in reality that humans are perceiving is a combination of subjective and objective. Uh, that's why, you know, I'm fond of saying you might say, oh, I'm a, I'm a scientist because I use tools. Well, guess where those tools came from? They were envisioned by a human built by a human, calibrated by a human, you know, used by a human, interpreted by a human. So, you know, let, let, let's get real about this. So it starts with me choosing a point of view that I think is a good point of view that shows the whole thing. Then what I do is I put it into a system where I spin it. So it's kind of like a phonograph, going back to the explanation that I gave you before. And as it's spinning, I hit it with a laser, 
and I take the light reflecting from the laser, and it goes into a special photosensitive circuit that turns that light into a tone, and that tone is then fed into a computer. So I can actually look and see the signature, the fingerprint of the tone that comes from every image. So every image is different and unique. And then I have an option. Well, you can just play around and listen to that tone, or you can take that tone and then play it in water, which is what I do to get sigils. Right. And once I, once I play it through water, you see a pattern in the water. I view it under uh, infrared light, and uh, that's so. That's how you get your sigil. So wow. again, maybe maybe I'm a madman. Maybe I'm <laughs> you know tapping into something here, but. That's what I'm up to. I do want to, uh, Josh, we'll go to our phone lines here and get, squeeze a call or two in. Uh, we might only have time for one before our next break, but this is TJ from Rhode Island. Hey, TJ, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you again. Thank you. Hello, Josh. And I've got a two-part question. I'm going to talk quickly to make sure there's room for other people. One has to do with the specificity of detail that you gave to JV regarding how to operate the wish machine relative to what came across as a rather offhand way of describing how you made your first wish with the machine you purchased in California. And the second part has to do with an experience, and it's the obscurity and any insight and analysis you can provide because I don't have one of your wishing machines. And I have to admit, I'm really not going to be in a position to purchase one because I want to know what am I doing where something happened and how do I make it happen again in other areas. And what happened was, for about six to nine months, I have been wishing and hoping that they would show a rerun of an old sci-fi show I loved from the 60s. I'd watch Comet TV and get tired of the lineup. And it was always the invaders. And this would be on and off. And I would say, uh, it'd be nice but, of course, it had a short run. Why would they ever drag that out of the vault and put it on TV? Well, you can imagine my surprise when Saturday at midnight on MeTV, guess what they started showing? The invaders. Yes. <laughs> And I never thought for one minute that it would ever come to pass. So I'm doing that, I guess, maybe, is that part of an experience? Because the obscurity of this show makes me feel a little special and involved. But at the same time, I think about money a great deal more, and why can't I make that happen if the forces <laughs> that are in play with your wish machine are active here, but they don't make my wallet thicker? <laughs> great question, great question, TJ. We only have about a minute, actually a little less right now. We can address it on the other side of the break as well. But uh, Joshua, is, are those the forces at play here? Yeah, TJ, thank you for that call. And, you know, here's what we, we have to understand. There is a relationship between the non-physical mold that you create with consciousness and where the physical stuff is directed. So, for example, okay, when you say look at a picture of the electromagnetic spectrum, there's a tiny little sliver of it called visible light. And on one end, you have radio waves and microwaves, and on the other end, you have X-rays and gamma rays. And some of it is physical because it resonates within the realm that your body resonates in, and so you can touch it. So that means, like, a radio wave can pass through your body because the radio wave is so different from the frequency of your body that they don't interact. Is the wishing machine a tool by which that energy gets uh, amplified, magnified, or concentrated in some way? Uh, well, yes, JV, I, I believe that's exactly what happens. And, you know, years ago, I teamed up with a man who values his privacy. He calls himself Dr. Mulder, who I believe is the greatest wishing machine maker in the world. And one of the reasons that we teamed up was because we wanted to try to figure out what the heck is going on here. So we created this thing called wishingmachineproject.com. And the machine that you have was made by Dr. Mulder. When you go to that site, there is a ton of free educational content there that shows you how far we've gone because we don't just sell these things. We keep up with it. You know, we, we talk to the, the people who buy them. We survey them. We're trying to figure out how this stuff works. And, and like I mentioned earlier, it's funny because um, I, I, I have, been, have been so impressed with this. I even made a short film 
that I just put out earlier this year called Wishmasters, where I talk to the top psionics and radionics experts in the world. If you go to uh, joshuapwarren.com, click the news section, you will be able to watch this for free. I put it on YouTube. I mean, I have a lot of free stuff out there. Yeah, I, was actually, I actually wanted to ask you, because I watched the uh, Wishmasters video before our interview yeah. tonight, and uh, there's some interesting characters there. Um, they're psionic masters? Is that what you said they were? That Yeah, these are the people who know more than anybody about gotcha. this topic. And in that video, did you, I'm sure saw what Dr. Mulder had to say. He was presented yeah. in silhouette. Yeah. He said he was inspired by, and the reason he's in silhouette is because he works with the government all the time, and I know that is true for a fact, because he has introduced me to some of the people that he has worked with in the government, who I know to this day, as we speak, are using this stuff. Dr. Mulder said that he was impressed by what physicists call the double slit experiment, meaning that when a particle is observed, it behaves differently than it does when it's not observed, uh, or something to that effect. I mean, this is a mind-boggling thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, we're always observing everything, right? But I guess maybe the better way to put it is a particle behaves differently when it is observed in a certain way, right? So maybe that's Part of what's happening with these machines, these machines are sort of like extensions of your mind that we're, we are so distracted. I mean, we have so many things going on to, to take us in a different mental direction. Like one minute you say, here's my goal, here's what yeah. I want to happen. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you say, well, what am I going to have for dinner tonight? And uh, you know, what time does my favorite show go on? It may be that these machines act as an extension of your intention that continue to sit there and automate that. So uh, having watched the movie Wishmasters, which as you see is freely available, um, what are some of your thoughts on how this works? I I don't know that I've got any. I am um, I, I'm I'm curious. I'm intrigued. Uh, I see a connection between um, you know what we would call quantum science and mm -hmm. dimensional science and thought uh, particles. I mean, there's, there are so many uh, cutting-edge sciences that are kind of starting to come together that I almost can see this process by which we're going to actually do an experiment here with this wishing machine. I can see those coming to play here, but I can't explain it. I can't. And not having used it yet, I'm not sure what to explain. Well, um, getting back to, to the usage of the thing, so... There are different ways, and I explain all this, you know, freely on uh, the website. Uh, but if you consider that this machine may be an extension of your own consciousness, right. then what you want to do is have the machine connect with you. So, in in other words, uh, you know, the most basic technique is to use what they call the the stick plate, where you're you're tuning each knob, and as you do this. You're stroking. Are we going to do a, this now? Do you want to do this now? Yeah, let's do should it we, now. Should we do yeah. it now? Yeah. Okay. So, um, what I have here is I've got two uh, drawings. One is um, actually one is not as drawing. It's it's text. It says um, what I'm what I'm hoping to achieve here: exceed 100 Beyond Reality Radio uh, affiliates on the radio station affiliate list. And the other was actually drawn by my. Uh, producer Orion, who uh, came up with a representation of what I considered to be a triumph in my professional career when this particular radio show actually became syndicated a few years back and the feeling that that brought with it. And he made a, a representation of that for me. So I've got those two pieces of paper with those two things on them. Okay, good. So Put those two things on your input plate, which on your machine, it's a metal plate, the one on the left. Okay, so I'm going to put them, just stack one on the other? Yep. Does it matter which one? Fine. Does it matter which one goes where? Top, bottom? I like to put the more visual one on the top. Okay. All right, I'm doing okay, that. Okay, so, so now think about the most basic raw 
form of pure manifestation. That's when people pray. And what do they do? They put their hands together, right? Yep. You know, I mentioned, I mentioned to you earlier the, the miraculous prayer board. It, that, that's a magnifier for prayer. But we'll get to that uh, if we have time. So what you want to do is envision the bio circuit being completed from one hand to the other. So take your left hand, and it doesn't really matter. I mean, you, you could switch it up. Are you, are you right-handed? I'm, I'm right-handed for the most part, yes. Okay. So take your left hand and turn that first knob slowly from zero all the way up as you are taking – I like to use my index finger. Some people use their thumb. It doesn't really matter. Take one of your fingers, whatever feels right to you, and stroke that output plate until you feel like that somehow your left hand and your right hand have connected. And most people describe that sensation as a stick. Okay. So what that means is that it might feel like that the plastic on the output plate goes from being slick to being kind of tacky. Okay. And as soon as you feel that, Leave that knob in that position. Okay. And now go to the second knob and do the same thing. Okay. And continue this process with every single knob. And once you've done that, you have now completed tuning the machine. Now, there are different things you can do once you've tuned the machine, which kind of vary based on the project. But as far as you're concerned, at this point, I would advise you to, to take the, the information that you put on the machine uh, in terms of the written material and the visionary material and take that visionary thing and just move it from the input plate to the output plate. This is after, move it right after I've tuned all of the knobs, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm Go ahead and on that. take that information, uh, uh, take the, 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 the picture that you have, and move it from the input plate to the output plate. So what you have done now is you have taken this intention, and you have tuned it into your bio circuit. Now, this would seem like ridiculous pseudoscience if it didn't actually work. But for some reason, I call it the greatest placebo in the world. I don't care <laughs> how it works. What you have just done is you have put this intention into a form that is going to work. So now what you want to do is take that machine exactly as it is. Don't touch it again. Don't turn the knobs again. Okay. Don't do anything with it other than put it in a place of respect and peace and quiet. Okay. And Let's see what happens. Okay, and and just put it there and and wait. We're gonna we're just gonna see what happens over the course of days, weeks, whatever it takes. Right? Is that is that what we do? Yeah, because the the, the length of time seems to depend on the magnitude of variables involved in the wish. Okay. So it's a lot easier to get a parking space than it is to get your radio show. You know, at the top of the list. Sure. sure. Um, so it's just like, for example, in my case, I have wanted to produce certain movies and TV programs. And, you know, if, if you work in the TV business, there are a lot of people involved. I mean, thousands of people. Right. And right. so that that's a bigger project. That takes longer. Um, and so I don't know how many moving parts are involved in, in your particular wish. Uh, so, it, you know, there's I can't tell you in good faith exactly how long to – to wait to have this happen. But now that you have done this, especially on the air with all of these witnesses, you know, all of these wonderful listeners, yeah. I believe that that makes it even more powerful because you have even more people who are contributing their energy to your goal. So if everybody listening um, offered some kind of psychological or mental support to this idea, do you think that would make this happen quicker? I think so. Yeah, interesting. I'm not sure, but I think so. I mean, I because again, what we're talking about here is taking your thoughts and turning them into molds that the physical part of reality can snap into. So, if and when 
this happens for you, you will, I'm sure, get on this program again and tell everybody, man, this worked, right? Yeah, I will. Then I'll bring you on and tell you on this program <laughs> that it worked. <laughs> and you and I will be talking about a lot more things, too. <laughs> Well, I'm going to make some other people jealous, you know, because I have a lot of friends in the radio business, and they're not going to probably like that, you know, I'm I'm, I'm uh, helping you out here. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but you're the you know you were smart enough to 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 take this opportunity to say let's do this as an experiment, you know, and and let's just get everybody involved, make this you know as obvious yeah. and transparent as possible. And this is a good way of showing people, like, how this process works. Now, why does it work? You know, the short and honest answer is we don't know. We really don't know why this works. But here's what I can tell you. In 2013, Scientific American published this article about how Hitachi had developed this little thin sliver of quartz crystal that has an amazing ability to store information. I mean, I can't even remember uh, how I'm, I'm, we're, we're, we're talking, you know, many, many terabytes. And, and, and it looks like half of a, a microscope slide. And they say that they believe it can hold this information for millions of years. They exposed it to 1,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures for hours, and it still held this information. One time I asked Dr. Mulder, why do you think it is that your machines are so effective and work so well? And he said, because I have a special process to select genuine quartz crystals that I put into my machine. And, you know, quartz is a transducer, so just to clarify for everybody, what that means is that it takes energy from one form and it turns it into another form. So you apply stress to quartz, it produces electricity. You apply electricity to quartz, it vibrates. So there is a very special circuit inside of a wishing machine. Now, look, it doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense when it comes to, you know, electronics. But I'm telling you, I think that the quartz has a big role to play here. And what you have just done, JV, is you have uh, you've involved all of us in this project to transduce an image into a mold into which physical reality shall fall and shape. I'm going to be eager to see how this plays out, and I'm excited about it as well. Um, we've got about two minutes left with you here. I did want to ask you one more time about the Creepy Vegas Ghost and UFO Show, because I'm, you, you mentioned it briefly in the beginning of our conversation. I want to know why I haven't been there yet, and I want to know more about this, because it sounds fascinating. Well, thank you for asking me, and uh, you know, I, I guess you know I'm I'm just delighted we we've talked about the wishing machine. Uh, it's we didn't get uh, to go into the miraculous prayer board as much as I like, but you just got to go to my website joshuapwarren.com and and watch the video on that. But creepy Vegas, this is you know it started as a tour because I own a big walking tour company in North Carolina, the Haunted Asheville Ghost Tour, and I have a museum and a laboratory. Right. And I came out here to Vegas where I do so much work, and I thought, what if I could do a walking tour here? And then I quickly realized that, well, Vegas is a show town, and sometimes people don't want to walk around when it's 105 degrees. <laughs> so yeah. I turned it into the Creepy Vegas Ghost and UFO Show. Creepy vegas.com 60 paranormal minutes in a bar how fitting is that for vegas it's perfect you sit there, <laughs> it's perfect you drink you have your beer you have your wine you have your cocktail you got a big screen there we show you some of the most amazing mind-boggling paranormal footage you've ever seen in your life you get to touch haunted objects which i'm going to keep as a surprise and uh, we do this at a bar called Millennium Fandom, which is this really cool pop culture bar uh, where they have all of these like movie prop replicas and stuff, like the idol from Raiders, oh, cool. and yeah. they have stuff from Game of Thrones and Star Wars and Star Trek and Doctor Who and Harry Potter, 
all this stuff. Yeah, creepyvegas.com. And I, but you see, the thing is, I travel around a lot, so I can't usually be there. But I will be there this coming Saturday, May the 11th. So if any of your listeners want to pay $19.95, which I guarantee you is the best deal you're going to get in Vegas, <laughs> come out here and see me this Saturday. And, and thank you, JV, for letting me uh, plug that because uh, it's just something I do for fun, and people love it. Well, we have an affiliate in Las Vegas, so hopefully um, that'll help with, with uh, letting people know what's going on. Listen, Joshua, it's always a fascinating conversation, and it always goes way too fast, and I always end it by saying, please come back. We have a lot more to talk about. Well, it's my pleasure. I love conversing with you about <laughs> who knows what. Who knows? <laughs> so you're, a, you're a great host. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Again, the website, joshuapwarren.com. It's Beyond Reality Radio. We're going to watch this wishing machine. Well, we're going to put it in a safe, quiet place, but and we're going to watch the results. Uh, we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, tomorrow night's program, John Hogue will be with us to talk about Nostradamus. That's uh, tomorrow night, and then Wednesday, G.L. Davis Davies will be talking about uh, the true account of a couple torn apart by a paranormal entity. A lot of great shows coming up on Beyond Reality Radio. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm J.V. Thanks for being here tonight. Beyond Reality Radio is hosted by Jason Hawes and J.V. Johnson and produced by Alexandria Johnson and Slick Eddie Edwards for Intercom Radio. Beyond Reality Radio is distributed by Westwood One Radio Networks. Stop by our Facebook page and say hello. Follow the hosts on Facebook as well. For Jason Hawes, follow at JasonHawes.Taps. For J.V. Johnson, follow at J.V.J. Paranormal. If you'd like to be a guest on Beyond Reality Radio or you have a suggestion for a guest, contact Slick Eddie Edwards at SlickEddieEdwards at gmail.com. Be sure to visit our chat room as well at beyondrealityradio.com. Thanks for listening.